Hey guys, I got a good one for you today. Installing Pergo 4-in-1 transitions on concrete with no screws. What? Yeah, it can be done. Stick around, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Coming up. What's up DIY Nation? Welcome back to another episode of You Floor Flooring Tips and Tricks. I'm your host, Zanone Hunt. Today I'm going to be showing you how I install these transitions on concrete in a doorway and we're also going to be picture framing around a fireplace hearth. So stick around to the end because you're not going to want to miss that. But before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out videos like this. And I heard there's a guy named YouTube Algorithm and he really loves it when you smash the like button. That always helps the YouTube channel grow. So if you wouldn't mind, help us doing that. Now, if you're not familiar with these transitions, they come in a package with several parts for multiple use. I just happen to have one right over here. Okay, as you can see, I have this one laid out here. It's gray and I have all the parts that come in the package. It comes with screws. It comes with these little things. I guess if you're drilling in concrete and you want to slide these down in the concrete and do the screws, of course, you'll drill your holes, set that down on the concrete, put the screw through it. And that works on wood and concrete. Uh, and then here, this is the, the first method I'll show you is going to be the T-mold. And that's when you're going from one surface that's level to the other surface. And you're just going like from one room to another room. And this is the spacer that you'll lay down. So you'll screw this down to the ground and then you'll just come back with your T-mold and you'll click it in like that down the track and it'll lip over top of that laminate and lip over top of this laminate. Uh, second one is going to be this one right here and this is a reducer and as you can see it's got a sloped edge to it right here where this one's kind of a bull nose and it's flat. So what you would do is you would take this right here like that and set it on top of that if you're going from the laminate that you're installing down to vinyl and you'll screw this down and then as you go cut it to length whatever your length happens to be You'll come in and you'll slip it in like that and clip it down with a hammer like that. And then your other use for this is going to be uh, this right here, which is a carpet reducer. And what you'll want to do is when you're installing up against carpet, you'll put this piece in right here. Of course, you'll screw that down to it again. Again, you'll clip it down like that. And then that's what it's going to look like. Your carpet will be tucked down like that. And it comes across and it, it gives it a good flush level surface from surface to surface. Also, when you're having to do something where you have the edge of the laminate, let's say you have this out into the open and you're having to go up against a banister or you're having to go up against a place like a fireplace hearth, like what we're doing today, you're going to want to use this one right here and it's going to want to go right up against it. Now, the problem I've had in the past with using these and trying to drill down into the concrete is making sure that this is right up against the fireplace hearth and that I have lined up these holes perfect so that when I go to click this in, there's no gap in between my fireplace hearth and the transition end molding. So what I like to do is use glue and hot glue and I'm going to show you how I do that. Now that I got that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. All right, before you get started, the first thing you're going to want to do is grab yourself an empty box so that you can put all your material and supplies in that. You're going to be using hot glue and you're gonna be using PL urethane glue, so it helps to have something to put it in to protect your floor. This stuff right here is made by Loctite, and I was told a long time ago, if you're gonna glue down transitions to concrete, this is the glue to use. And also make sure you have plenty of glue sticks. You don't wanna be in the middle and run out. The first thing we need to do when getting started is to take a measurement for the transition, and it looks like we're at 32 and an eighth for this one. Now that I have both parts of the transition cut to length, I need to cut the U-channel to length to match. So I line up both pieces with each other just like it will be when I install it. Then I lay the metal track down about a quarter of an inch to a half inch away from the end. I do this because I'm going to be clipping this thing together as one piece and I want to leave room at the end in case I need to trim a little off or I have to knock it to a doorstop. Now that I have the U-channel cut to length, I will assemble all the pieces. When I do this for an open-ended transition, 
I usually CA glue these parts together and run a stain pin down the top edge of the bottom piece. They aren't always consistent when coloring that piece and sometimes there's a small white line at the top. But when we are going up against something like we are, the bottom piece is never seen and really only acts as a filler piece to reach down into the concrete. So the CA glue and stain pin are not necessary, but I'll go over that in another video. After I check the pieces to fit, I see that I need to take a little off the sides at a slight angle. I always cut these very tight to the biggest number and then trim or sand them to custom fit. When installing laminate, generally you want to put your transition directly under the door. I always tell my helpers, pretend the transition is just an extension of the door. You don't want to be able to see either floor from the other side of the door. However, when you are going up against a hearth or existing tile, like in our case, you are kind of limited to where the tile guy finished off his work. And with his finished edge and my expansion gap, looks like I'm going to have to notch this transition around the doorstop. Good thing I didn't run my piece of metal all the way to the end. Now I have an area designated for a notch. Man, that's beautiful. What a tight fit. Time for some glue. Now I want to make this very clear. Once this stuff cures, it will become one with the tile and the concrete and it will not move. So make sure your gap is big enough to allow for the glue and the quarter inch expansion gap. I usually leave about an inch and a quarter with the four and ones. And I put the glue up as close to the tile as possible in big tall clumps. Years ago, when I first started using this stuff, I got a little too close to the laminate. Believe me, when they say allow for expansion, they are not lying. When the seasons changed, the laminate did what laminate does. It wanted to move, but the transition said no. So the floor had nowhere to go but up. I had to remove the transition without damaging the floor. Remember, as I said, it becomes one with the concrete. So it came out in pieces. Then I had to trim the laminate back with an oscillating tool and re-glue a new transition. I learned a great lesson that day. That was a while back and I haven't had to return since. We are required to put a bead of silicone up against the floor when installing Pergo Outlast to ensure water resistance in case of spills or pet accidents. Once the glue and silicone are in position, time to drop some hot glue in some specific spots throughout the gaps in between the glue globs. The hot glue is not permanent. It is only temporarily and will hold until the Loctite cures. When we are out on jobs, we don't have weights we can carry and leave behind at customers' houses, so it kind of serves the same purpose. Tape could be used as an extra precautionary measure in this situation. What I like about the hot glue is that after about 30 to 45 seconds, and it is an instant hold, feels very solid. Almost done. Lastly, I put a very small bead of silicone in the crack between the transition and the tile. This is to prevent any water from getting in and causing problems later. And there you have it. One transition installed against tile on concrete with no screws. Moving into the living room, our next project, picture framing the fireplace hearth. I do this similar to the last one, but I change one step. No hot glue, but we add CA glue into the mix on this one. First, I want to start by taking a measurement of all three sides. These will all be to the short point of a 45 degree miter. Thank you. 
After all the pieces have been cut, I cut the U channel as before, a little short of the end, and I assemble all three sides. This way I'll be able to test fit all three pieces and trim either one of them as needed. You don't have to cut these at a 45 degree angle. I'm just being fancy at this point. With all three pieces fully assembled, I can now drop them in with no glue to see if any needs to be trimmed. I want to be as tight to the granite as possible as to not create any crack for dust or dirt to rest in. Hmm, looks good, but something's just not right. One second. Ah, uh, I decided to take three quarters of an inch off the square end of the side pieces. I would rather butt my transition into the three quarter than to notch the three quarter over the top of the transition. That can be a pain sometimes. Wow, that's pretty tight. I'll take it. This next step is the added step the use of CA glue. I just recently learned about CA glue. Shout out to Finnish Carpentry TV. This stuff has made life so much easier on me with certain projects. I wish I would have known about this stuff back when I was installing crown mold on cabinets. It would have really came in handy. Anyway, one is a cyanoacrylate glue, which is basically super glue, but I love this kind because it's really thick. The other stuff is the accelerator, which makes the super glue cure almost instantly. You just put the CA glue on one piece, then you spray the accelerator on the other piece, and then when you touch them together, you literally have about four seconds and the two pieces are stuck like Chuck. By using the CA glue, this allows me to assemble all three pieces together as one unit. It never hurts to test dry fit it one more time before you put the glue in. Due to the weight of the whole assembly, after I put the glue down, there is no need for hot glue. The weight of the transition itself will hold itself down under its own weight.
Remember, this is a long transition, so be generous with the glue. With this transition being so long, I will tape the edges just to hold them in place until the lock tight cures. And to top it off, I will put a small bead of silicone between the crack just to keep dust and moisture out as we did with the other transition. And that's basically it. Well, there you have it, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope this video brought you some value and will help you the next time you need to install Pergo 4-in-1 transitions on concrete with no screws. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out videos like this. And if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future videos, go ahead and leave those in the comments and I'll be sure to address those. Also, if you wouldn't mind, smash that like button. And until next time, stay safe and take care. Peace.